So the only thing I've got any real experience with that I've been using for years and I knew a bit more about was two-part resin. Uh, this is polyurethane resin, probably similar composition to that which the, uh, the guys use for filling logs and making tables with but it's uh, this was more stuff I'd used in model making and it sets reasonably quickly and using the bowl formers and resin as you can see from the, uh, the next shots we actually succeeded in getting somewhere. Now for resin moulding normally I'd use a silicon rubber mould um, I've used these both for model making and for projects that I've done in woodworking um, and the beauty of it is not only does it take the detail well you can flex it away from your castings pop them out and reuse it and you've got a repeatable way of doing things for the bowl however you'd need a huge amount of uh, silicon rubber and it's the, probably the most expensive part of the, the whole thing it's, a, it's about £20 a kilo or something like that um, so it, it's not really viable in this instance uh, but I had got, which I've been using earlier on, a couple of bowls that I'd got from Poundland uh, for a pound a piece so that was probably what the best thing to use um, just sandwich them slightly apart with the resin between and it should give me an, an inner and an outer the only problem is resin won't tend to stick to the metal but it in an area like that I suspect I would have a huge amount of difficulty in getting the mould out um, so what I'll do is I'll just give it a very quick smear over with some Vaseline just to actually give it a non-stick surface um, and that, that may in itself leave a problem with marking on the surface because it'll pick up every I've, I've picked up fingerprints in the past on surfaces with the um, resins but it's also very easy to work as a material it's, it's it'll machine beautifully it will cut beautifully it'll sand and polish well so I'm not too worried about that and after all I have to keep reminding myself this is only a bowl rather than a work of art to go in the Louvre. So we do the inside of the one and the outside of the other and that should give me a fair chance of being able to strip the mould once the uh, resin is set. Now the resins that I'm using are I suppose I think they're the same family as, as those that you see used in um, with all the furniture guys filling knot holes in wood and making live edge tables and things um, but essentially it, it's coloured it comes out a clear milky white colour um, <coughs> and it sets in about two minutes which is probably the principal difference it's a polyurethane resin two part so you've got to be reasonably quick on the mark getting it uh, poured and uh, the, the beauty of that is that I can actually keep the two bowls together by hand in the time it will set so that I can get some way of keeping the, uh, the distances apart uniform. What I've also cut is some very small pieces of resin just as spacers to keep the distance between the top and the bottom they should incorporate into the resin okay and I suspect you won't be able to notice them when they're finished and again if not we'd be able to polish it out but that will give me a distance apart and then it's just a matter of keeping them while the resin is setting so we'll go and get some measures and mix the resin up Right now this stuff's incredibly messy so I've uh, <coughs> I put a layer of polythene down to start with just to keep the stuff off. I've done it in the kitchen in the past. It, it doesn't smell. It does clean up quite well if you get it onto a surface like glass or anything but you really don't want to be doing it in the house if you can help it. Um, 
I want about 200 ml of the whole liquid. I, I put some water in the bowls and got a rough idea. So I'm pouring 100 ml of the hardener into a container. And I'll do the same with the actual resin. <clears throat> I've got the clock there so you can get a rough idea of how long it takes to set without having to uh, sit and watch it for two or three minutes, which can be a bit boring. Um, we've got 250ml of that because I haven't got another big cup. <clears throat> Not entirely precise. They they actually work on uh, volume by weight uh, rather than volume itself. <coughs> in the in the mixing, they recommend it's one to one by weight, um, and I think the harden is slightly heavier because I seem to get through slightly more. But it's not a, that precise a science. Um, clean the pot up. Otherwise, we'll end up with bits in the resin. You've got to be reasonably well prepared for all of this because otherwise it's gone off before, particularly this sort of weather, it's gone off before you've had a chance to do anything with it. So that's cleaned the pot. I'm going to use the mix. Uh, I've got a mixing stick to get it mixed up a bit. In fact, I'll probably use a large screwdriver, maybe better. The other thing that you get with it is uh, there's an exothermic reaction so you get a lot of heat generated uh, and just to keep a track on that just do a quick look at that that's 24 degrees at the moment the actual pot let's go for it and basically you mix the two parts together the hardener and the resin and it's almost like a watery consistency milk so sort of. um, but that does need to be mixed up well so those are mixed together ideally I'd have degassing facilities to, to take any really small air bubbles out but again um, it's it's just something else that's more room to take up and more junk and something you don't use that often with most of the casting I do it's not a problem. That's mixed up now so I'm reasonably happy with that. That will then just pour into the mould. You can see it's basically like water. Probably got to uh, take the surface tension out of the bits that are spacers and relocate them. But the resin will fundamentally hide them at the end of the day. So that's the pour. What I will do then is at what just on the minute hand going up to the top. Get something heavy and pour into that. And that's just about then pouring up to the top. So now I'm just going to let that go hard while I stand here like an idiot and hold it. That's now starting to turn white. You can start to see that the clear resin down here is turning white. It doesn't mean it's set, it just means it's starting to gel and it's enabled me to take my hands off. The thing will start to become reasonably stable, uh, but it will probably need two or three hours before it actually is ready to be cracked apart. Um, while it's still warm, the resin tends to be a little bit flexible can be an advantage in if you want to make something curved you can cast a flat sheet and then just take it out of the mould fast but um, in this instance I want to make sure it's really set quite well before 
I do anything else but we'll get an idea from the clock speed through um, how long that actually took to get to that point I think it's safe now to be able to take that weight off it <coughs> and I'll get a rough idea on what the temperature is in there at the moment it's up to 33 already at the moment in there so it does start to ouch it, that's hurting me to touch so it's um, surprisingly how surprising how much it is generated oh, 38 44 42 41 42 41 so it's, it's beginning to get some real heat into it now which again helps the curing it's, it helps it start to go off uh, and as I say at this, at this state it's in like a plastic state it's not fully set but it has become quite gelatinous I think so we'll leave that for probably a couple of hours now and then we'll get ready and strip it when it's if I can I said I'm still not even sure I'll be able to get it apart but we'll uh, give it a try when it's gone really hard you can see we're about half an hour on what's happened now is that the resin has gone pretty hard bits that were on the polythene because it won't stick to polythene you can see there's an element of flex still in it but it's essentially quite rigid and it's surprising how strong it is actually you can uh, once it's fully dry it's quite uh, quite quite strong so it's time i think we can click the bits off the underneath <coughs> so i think it's probably time to see if we can at least crack it apart see what we've got flash off but not the original ball not the prettiest in the world but we've got a bowl <clears throat> it's still a little bit soft so I'm going to leave that now to cure a bit further but essentially it seems to have worked you can just make out the original spaces but by the time it's sanded it looks like it's worked brilliant right well what I've done now is I've just used a kettle of boiling water on the back of the mould which has got a bit of heat into the actual resin itself and hopefully the expansion will just allow me to just pop that yep that's just gone now that allows the bowl to come off and with a couple of air bubbles in there which perhaps um, with a bit of effort I could get rid of I could put a bit of pour a bit of resin in there but other than that it's actually made probably a more credible bowl than anything else I've done um, 
looks consistently the same thickness. Just want to be a light sand and a clean off. But yeah, resin um, seems to have been the most I'll say, successful, but that's hardly a surprise. Um, I've been working with resin now for probably 10 years or more. Uh, and I've not really done any serious woodworking, so it's it's hardly any surprise that the thing that I'm used to using is the thing that has produced perhaps the most successful bowl. You can see that it's incredibly strong from just the bits there that they will break, but it's really good stuff, and it will run very thin. I mean, I can pull the because it doesn't stick to polythene. That's the, uh, the stuff that was left, and that is paper thin, and yet it has a has a degree of strength even in itself. So that's the resin bowl. That's perhaps the most successful of the, uh, the bowls, but somehow it's just not right because it was partly because it was too easy, I think. As I say, using materials that I've been used to using, doing things that I'm used to doing, somehow it doesn't really seem like I've made anything. It's almost like putting the numbers in a CAD program and print, 3D printing a bowl. It's just not somebody else did all the work in that that was made by somebody else and all I've done is just use it as a mold. That's it. Probably the most successful one was the, uh, the resin bowl uh, and the beauty of that is that if you've got any sort of leftover bits that um, get broken or anything it's, it's also quite nice. Mm. New one for you Keith. Eat a bowl challenge. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly enjoyed the last bit. I hope it's also shown that it's very often that you learn more from the failures than the things that you normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's certainly the case that I found that I learned far more from the things that I was doing for the first time and failing with than the things that I was, like the, the resin bowl, that I was permanently working with for the last 10 years. So I hope it's been of use and um, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.